Over the first three parts of this series, I ran through a variety of settings combinations and examined a number of .LUA file tweaks in an effort to achieve 60 frames per second performance with an i7-2600K and two AMD HD7970 3GB video cards. I found that the best solution was to disable Crossfire and run the game with one GPU. As anticlimactic as that solution is, especially given that whenever I run DCS World I'll have what was once a $600 video card sitting idle, I'm glad to have the results. Having obtained the desired level of performance, I now consider various anti-aliasing options to see whether I can improve image quality while still maintaining 60 frames per second performance. The simplest and costliest option is to enable MSAA from the Options menu within DCS World. 2x MSAA is the lightest application of this, and as you can see it helps to take the edge off of surfaces within the cockpit. The performance hit is relatively mild as you can see here. Average FPS drops from 70 frames per second to 71 frames per second. Spikes from attacking ground targets and activating air-to-ground mode are apparent, as is a drop in performance for flying through a cloud, but generally speaking performance remains largely above 60 frames per second. Microstutter is not an issue. Increasing to 4x MSAA results in increased image quality. At 2560 by 1600 native resolution, 4x MSAA results in a very nearly flawless image. Some jaggedness can still be detected, but this is very minor and not distracting at all. At this level of anti-aliasing, performance remains smooth and responsive. This is borne out by an analysis of frame times for the instant action East Georgian Spring scenario. My system puts out an average of nearly 70 frames per second and except for a few moments of weakness, maintains better than 60 frames per second at all times. Even 8x MSAA remains a viable option, though my system begins to struggle with it. Though you can see here, jagged lines on the HUD frame and console buttons is all but eliminated. Performance remains smooth and pull responsive. Up, up. Altitude, altitude. Analysis of the frame times indicates that even though my system can barely keep pace above 60 frames per second, even at 8x MSAA I'm able to obtain 60 FPS performance minus the expected dips that we've seen in almost every other run. Because I wanted to take it as far as I could, this is 16x MSAA. Pull up, pull up. Once you get up above 4x MSAA, my opinion is that you're Altitude. into diminishing Altitude. returns territory, though it really can't be disputed that the image quality is really superb at 2560 by 1600. It looks much better at that resolution than it does at 1080p here on YouTube, I'll tell you that much. The interesting thing is that even at 16x MSAA, my system seems capable of maintaining 60 frames per second performance. This was totally unexpected. I considered the possibility that this was a fluke, but over the course of three runs, very similar results were obtained. Even when examining the second run, which had the lowest overall performance of the three runs at 16x MSAA, the worst period of sustained performance had an average of 62 frames per second with only the occasional frame rendered over the 16.667 millisecond threshold. Curious as to what might be going on to allow this to happen, I took a closer look at GPU utilization. I guessed that though the increased anti-aliasing might be requiring more for my GPU, it ultimately had only a limited effect on my CPU's ability to push frames. As it turned out, GPU utilization was 100% even at no MSAA. There was virtually no difference between the GPU utilization graphs at no MSAA as compared to 16x MSAA. My HD7970 is being put to full use by the DCS World graphics engine. Whether at no MSAA or 16x MSAA, it's given all it can to render as many frames as it can. It's difficult to believe that there's only a 12.5% performance hit for going to 16x MSAA from no MSAA, but that's what the evidence suggests. So much for MSAA settings in the options menu. I could take a moment to look at 8xQ and 16xQ MSAA, but really doing so would be gratuitous at native resolution, and we're right at the 60fps threshold. Really, sticking our toes over the edges as it is. Now I took a look at 3D application settings in AMD Catalyst Control Center. 
As you can see here, there are a variety of options to control anti-aliasing, texture filtering, frame rate control, and tessellation, independent of the program settings. To begin with, I select some quite modest settings, 2x MSAA and 2x standard anisotropic filtering, with tessellation off. No difficulties were evident using 3D application settings directly from the Catalyst Control Center, overriding the application settings. It seemed like performance was a little less than expected, just based on glances up at the DX3 FPS counter, but at no time did it feel as though my system was bogging down or unable to deliver the 60 FPS performance that I'm looking for. This is a pretty busy rocket and gun run, and my system is still delivering a solid 40 FPS without stutter. Analysis of frame times proves what I already know subjectively. My system is able to turn out a credible 60 FPS experience using these settings via Catalyst Control Center. The rocket and gun run was rendered at about 40 FPS, and a look over my shoulder to my wingman flying in some clouds brought performance down to about 54 to 55 FPS, but other than that, all was well. Curious about the extremes, I determined to find out how my system would handle the most rigorous settings available via Catalyst Control Center. I selected 8x EQ MSAA and super sampling at that, 16x anisotropic filtering with highest settings for quality and surface format optimization, whatever that means. This was a mess, with performance lower than with all settings maxed and DCS world pull options. Up, pull up. 12 frames per second average, maximum 20 frames per second. I find it pretty amusing that through sheer force of habit I was able to pull off the rocket and gun run at waypoint 3 even at less than 10 FPS, but this would be pretty maddening for everyday play. Clearly getting aggressive with settings is not the way to go. Altitude, altitude. Trying a more modest 8x MSAA through Catalyst Control Center, no anisotropic filtering, I was able to obtain more reasonable performance. I'm just about to 60 FPS without stuttering or lag throughout. Altitude, altitude. I have to say, this was one of the more violently executed attacks on the insurgent patrol at Waypoint 3 that I have seen so far. Good job with that patrol. Pull up, pull now pull up. Drop into Perhaps frame time analysis shows that 8x MSAA via Catalyst Control Center performance is inferior to 8x MSAA through DCS World Options by about 3 to 5 FPS. Multiple runs proved this, and therefore I have to recommend taking a look at it yourself or just avoiding 3D application settings through Catalyst Control Center. Theoretically, performance should be exactly the same, but it isn't, and I cannot explain why except to guess that adding another layer of program creates inefficiencies. Having looked at DCS World Options and Catalyst Control Center for anti-aliasing, I now turn to an alternate anti-aliasing method, specifically Sweet Effects. This third-party solution offers the promise of low overhead anti-aliasing through SMAA and FXAA, as well as a variety of post-processing visual options such as sepia tone or technicolor, if you get the right version. There's a rather complicated thread on the Eagle Dynamics forums that's confusing because it's so old and tangled, and the root post is not related to sweet effects anyway, so in the end, I had to spend some time trying, failing, and wondering what I was doing wrong. Altitude. I'll lay out the steps to install and pull get Sweet Effects working here. First, go to this forum post and download Sweet Effects from the link provided just underneath the image of the folders. Second, unzip the folders into the Eagle Dynamics DCS World bin folder like so. The two Sweet Effects folders will be in the bin folder, and the Sweet Effects README, Preset, and Settings files, and the D3D9 DLL and DXGI DLL files will be out among the loose files in the bin folder. Third, go into the Sweet Effects X64 folder and copy and paste D3D9 DLL and DXGI DLL back out into the bin folder, overwriting and replacing the files that you initially put there. This is necessary because DCS.exe is a 64-bit executable and thus requires 64-bit compatible DLL files for SweetFX to work. This was a major stumbling block for me. Once you've done this, you can go into the SweetFX settings file with a text editor. I recommend Notepad++ and change the settings. As you can see, there are two post-processing anti-aliasing options, SMAA and FXAA, and a scad of optical effects to be played with. This done, 
What follows is some experimentation with SMAA and FXAA in DCS World. The first thing you might discover is that DCS World crashes when SweetFX is installed and you're running Dextery or Fraps. This is because SweetFX uses a lot of the same sorts of methods that Dextery and Fraps use to put the FPS counter up in the corner. The easy fix is to start DCS World, get into the pit, and then start Dextery or Fraps. At this point I have to apologize, because it was my intent to wrap up this series by reviewing anti-aliasing and the multiplayer experience, then provide a summary. The matter proved to be too complicated for easy treatment, however, and so I have to continue onward into Part 5, where I'll go into DCS World Performance with SweetFX post-processing anti-aliasing, and then give a treatment of the multiplayer experience. Thanks for watching. Part 5 coming soon.